I live when troubles rise. God that allowed us to retrace our footsteps back to his house one more time. Amen. To the deacon staff, to the choir that has sung so beautifully here this morning, all of my father's children here in the Morning Star family and on the web, it is good to be here. Amen. See some, uh, some familiar faces from Magnolia. At this church in, in, in Waynesboro. Right. Amen. Had an uncle pastor over, great uncle had pastored over there, and, and a cousin. Amen. Good to see him. Amen. Amen. God is good. Let's give our young people and all those who participated in the uh, Black History Program a hand. know you sitting patiently. I sat patiently waiting on you. So don't get up trying to go to the bathroom now. Amen. 
I ain't going to say, Lord, bless. There is a word that comes from God. Amen. Amen. While you are turning, turn with us to Reverend. Uh, you know, these young people, they have what they call on Facebook, Throwback Thursday. And they show pictures from back in the past. They even have some outfits that they would call vintage outfits that we call throwbacks. And so today we're going to have a throwback Sunday. Right. Amen. With us from Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20. Very familiar passage of scripture. Amen. I'll be coming from the King James Version of God's Holy Writing. If you have another translation, that's all right. Don't wind up on the same road because it is the Word of God. What oh, the joy that came to me when I knew that I was free. When I saved, I found me. Wrapped his arms all around me. Oh, the joy that came to me. Oh, the joy that came to me. When I knew that I was free. When my Savior found me. Wrapped his arms all around me. Oh, the joy that came to me. Oh, the joy that came to me when I knew that I was free when my Savior found me wrapped his arms all around me oh the joy that came to me anybody in here remember the day and remember the hour when Jesus came on the inside of you he put your feet on solid ground took you out of the mocking mouth and you've never been the same. Oh, the joy that came to me when I knew that I was free. For oh, the Savior found me, wrapped his arms all around me. Oh, the joy that came to me. Amen. Amen. That's one of them throwbacks from back down home. Amen. Revelation chapter 3. In verse 20. And it reads like this. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and I will sup with him and he with me. May God have a blessing to the reading of his awesome word. I'd like to talk with you briefly from the aid of the Holy Spirit from the thought, a knock at the door. A knock at the door. A knock at the door is one of life's most interesting episodes. When we hear the knock, we are guessing who's standing on the other side. It could be the neighbor's kids coming to ask, can they come over to play? It could be a Jehovah's Witness. It could be an Avon sale person. Or it could be a long lost friend. Yeah, the list can go on and on, but in Revelation, here John has a vision of Jesus standing at the door. Yeah, yeah, he's saying, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Yeah, this in itself is a glorious truth. For it points out that the Lord takes the initiative to reach out to lost people. Yeah, this text speaks uh, uh, to our hearts here this morning on various transactions that take place uh, in the action of a soul coming to Christ 
as Savior. First of all, there, 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 there's three of them that I want to talk to you about this morning. First of all, the approach by Christ to a sinner. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Let's us know that Jesus is knocking with concern. Yeah, he's concerned about the whole person. Yeah, their character, their mentality, their physical well-being. Christ is also concerned about their spirituality. Yes, and their soul need. Jesus, while on earth, showed great concern over spirituality and morality of humankind. Jesus was willing uh, to be found in the company of Republicans and sinners who were the used spiritual remains of his day. Yes, Jesus uh, was concerned about the Gadarean demoniac and greedy Zacchaeus. Yeah, and because of Jesus' concern, it transformed their lives. Yeah, Jesus uh, doesn't, doesn't mind making house calls. Yeah, no matter if you live in a graveyard or stuck in a treehouse. He'll come right where you are. Right. And if you're insincere in your asking, when you hear him knocking, open up the door. Not only that, Jesus is knocking in the spirit of love and compassion. Yeah, someone said that love is blind. Now, it isn't blind. For it sees more of our needs than we think. Because it sees more of our needs, it's willing to see few imperfections. Yeah, the woman that was taken in adultery was, worth, uh, was worthy of death according to the law. But Jesus treated her with compassion and rescued her her from her uh, would-be executioners. Yeah, Jesus looks today with compassion and tender love upon every lost sinner. Yeah, desire that who desires to come unto him in the heart then abide with them. Yes, uh, he looks beyond our faults and gives us a savior. Yeah, yeah. Number two is the response. Hearing and opening. If any man hear my voice, open the door. Anyone hearing the knock may respond. No one is excluded. Oh, it doesn't matter if you're rich, poor, Greek, or barbarian. We all can meet together at Jesus' feet. Yeah, yeah, though he came, he, though he came to present uh, uh, the way of life first to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He came to present the way of salvation to all. Yeah, he came to touch uh, the lives of everyone everywhere and to meet uh, our spiritual needs uh, Yes, Jesus came to seek and save those who are lost in all degrees of sinfulness. Doesn't matter if you're a prostitute, a thief, a, a hypocrite, a murderer, or the hardest of all sinners to reach the self-righteous. Yeah, 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 we got some folk that think they're holier than thou. That they came out with Jesus himself. But I want to let you know here that all have sinned and have come short of God's glorious standards. And so he came to die for all of us. Oh, don't you look down at your, down your nose at somebody right now because we all sometimes get a little self-righteous. Yeah, we start looking down at folk when they don't look like we look. 
When they don't dress like we dress. When they don't smell like we smell. Yeah, we think because we've been coming to church umpteen number of days that we can look down at the one that just come yesterday. But I want you to know here today that we all sinners. Saved by grace. Saw a church right here in Laurel that turned around and got a sign outside the door that says, Sinners are welcome. I'm saying, how you figure that? You a sinner too. Amen. We all are sinners that are saved by grace. And we are recovering sin addicts. We take one day at a time because we're just one hair click away from being where we once were. But I wonder why it's so hard for a self-righteous person to hear God. I come to find out that there are some difficulties in hearing the knock. Yeah, yeah, the story is told that one day a pastor stood on the steps on the front porch of a house. And he knocked for some time. Finally, he remembered that the elderly man that lived alone was hard of hearing. And he played his, his TV rather loudly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So naturally, he couldn't hear the knock at the front door in his living room. So it is with us. There is a noise that comes from the world. And it prevents us from hearing the master's knock on the heart door. Yes, yeah, some of these noises are, are common to us. Yeah, there is the commotion of material world. Yeah, yeah, the, the reason uh, that the members of this rising generation have a standard of value based on material wealth is that we have taught them to be like that. Yet yeah, through our example before them, we are constantly reaching out for this and that, the new material possessions of the world. No wonder they look like we do. No wonder they act the way they act because they get the example from us. We got to have. We got, we got the flip phone. Now we went to the touch phone. Now they came out with the iPhone 6. Your phone ain't nothing wrong with it, but you got to have the iPhone 6. You got to beat somebody else from getting the iPhone 6. And they're just tickle pink at Apple. Amen, because once you buy that iPhone 6, in just a few months, they're going to come out with iPhone 7. Hey Amen, guess what? I won't get the iPhone 6 until they come out with iPhone 36. Hey Amen. Long as the phone I got is doing all right, I'm all, it's all right with me. Hey Amen. I don't have to keep up with the Joneses, and I ain't talking about y'all back there. Hey Amen. I ain't got to keep up with the Joneses. I am be, I'm all right with what I got. Yeah, you can go broke if you want to, trying to keep up with somebody else, trying to keep up with the fad and the things that are going on right now. I'm not going broke. It got quiet in here just then. Amen. But I'm not going broke because I'm trying to keep up with modern technology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not only that, there's a sound wave interference of Satan. Yeah, the, the reading I read the other day of a person that was taken prisoner during World War II. He salvaged enough equipment to send out a radio message calling for help. But the enemy immediately detected the faint message and jammed the airways preventing the prisoner fellow Americans uh, from hearing his call for help. Satan's tactic is to attempt to prevent our hearing 
of the loving call of God. Yes, Satan knows if we call on God, God will save us. He'll rescue us. He'll vindicate us. Yeah, if we call on Jesus, the name that above all other names, Say that you call on the name of the Lord. Thou shalt be saved. Yeah, if you call on the name of the Lord. Yeah, there is shelter in that name. If we call on the name of the Lord. If we stand still, he'll fight our battle. Yeah, if we call on the name of the Lord. Yeah, we know that he is our refuge and our strength. He's present help in times of trouble. Yeah, if we call on the name of the Lord, he knows that he's going to be defeated. So he tries to sever our relationship with God because he knows if we call on him, souls will be saved. The homosexual change is way. The addict will come off drugs. The alcoholic will put down the bottle. Yeah. The prostitute, he or she will leave the corner yeah. and come to the house of God. Yeah. Because if we call on the name of the Lord, there's power yeah. in his name. Yeah. And at his name, every knee is going to bow. Every tongue is going to confess to the glory of the Father. So he tries to sever using the static interference. Yeah, not only that, there are some sinful habits. Some people just love to get in their sin. Yeah, yeah, they love it so much that they're, 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 they're not willing to turn away from the sin to come to true repentance. My brothers and my sisters, uh, Jesus is going uh, he's not going to break down your door. Yeah, because the door to your heart doesn't have a knob on the outside. Yeah, yeah, the door uh, of one's heart must be open from within. Because Jesus, when you open that door, he'll come in and abide with you. Yeah, I was looking at uh, television the other night and they got a spinoff of of. of of the pastors of L.A. They got now the pastors of Detroit. And we know that Detroit is going through a crisis. Yeah. Amen. And so what they were trying to do is get all the pastors together so that they could come up with a solution to help out Detroit. But instead of them coming out with a solution, they started arguing among themselves about what someone is riding in, what someone is living in. Their idea is greater than other ideas. But I come by this morning in a Salvation Sunday to let them know that it ain't about what you're riding in. It ain't about what you're living in. It's not how you're dressed, but it's about the soul that needs to be saved. Yes, if we seek first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness and everything else will be added. We need to stop trying to worry about our own plan and start worrying about God's plan. God didn't put it in the Bible for nothing. Amen. Some things just need to remain the same. There are some formulas that we need to keep on following. Yeah, it ain't about me and how many people join Morning Star. It's not about my name on a bulletin board. It's not about folk patting me on my back. It's about Jesus, the Christ, the Son of the living God. We need to get back to the basic. I care about you because God care about you. I'm so glad that there was somebody that cared enough to send the very best. It wasn't Hallmark, but they gave me Jesus. They kept on. Every time they turned around, they would get on my nerves. 
and tell you that God loves you, do you accept him as your Lord and your Savior? Yeah, I, I would get tired of seeing them come, but I'm so glad that they kept on coming. And when they kept on coming one Thursday night, I met him in the pardon of my sins. He made a house call to my house. And I'm so glad that I opened the door. When I opened the door, that was the best move that I ever made. Anybody in here, thank God for him knocking on your door. Thank God. And so now, we don't have no excuse. We got to leave these walls. Go out into the edge of the highway, and sometimes we got the witness in our own house. It's all right to witness to somebody else, but sometimes the greatest battle is in your house. And when you begin to live the life before your children and your wife and husband, and then you're able to go out and tell somebody else about the goodness of God. But thirdly, I got one more here. We're going to get ready to go. When you open this door, I want you to know that the guest has something to offer. Amen. Jesus said that if we open our hearts to him, he'll put a new heart and mind in this whole body. Yes, and we'll become a new creature in Christ Jesus. We'll offer, he'll offer the friendship and peace. And we'll be closer to us than a brother. Yeah, this uh, is a peace that will surpass all understanding. Yeah, I'm talking about this heavenly peace. Yeah, we'll rise to the occasion. We will enjoy a fellowship with our master. We've been invited by the master as we invite him to our hearts. And our lives will daily have happiness because we're in fellowship with Christ. We'll have a song in our heart and a prayer of communion and fellowship on our lips. Today, Jesus is knocking on the door of your heart. Do you believe in him enough? to act on it do you believe in him enough to open the door do you believe in him enough to allow him to be oh, your master lord and savior yeah I want you to know when he comes in he wants to bring joy oh, to your misery hope to your despair power to your life peace to your anxiety truth to your lies. Yeah, healing to your hurt. Yeah, rest to your weary soul. I want to let you know that weeping may endure for a night. But how many of you know that joy come in the morning? Yeah, he wants to bring comfort to the midst of your crisis. Help in the midst of hopelessness. He want to give you peace in the midst of your perplexity. Yeah, he wants to solve. He gives you salvation in the midst of your problems. Yeah, he wants to give you wealth in the midst of your prosperity. He wants to give you stability in the midst of your stumbling. Yeah, victory in the midst of all your battles. Deliverance from all your defeats. Forgiveness from all your faults. He wants to give you faith in the fear of salvation. Yeah, and he wants to bring the light, uh, bring light to you out of darkness. Uh, anybody in here know that he's worth all our praise. He's worth every praise we have. He's worth, uh, if I had 10,000 tongues, uh, I still wouldn't be able to tell him thank you enough uh, for all that you've done for me. Uh,